to like uh, the main architecture of Teradata. We just get an introduction of Teradata is basically and some of the common differences between Teradata RDBMS and other RDBMS and a little bit on history and then the more core internal part architecture of Teradata. Basically a request processing if we do, how, how does it perform in Teradata? Those things we will see for now. So Teradata basically it's an RDBMS similar to any other RDBMS or ActiveDB to SQL Server where the information is stored in the form of tables like rows and columns. So Teradata is an RDBMS relational database management system and it has been designed or has entered into the market only for large systems, only for commercial databases or huge databases. It's uh, one of the good solutions for enterprise-wide data warehousing. So in the current market, right, uh, most prominent databases in the market are like Exadata, Nikisa, then Teradata. The competitors of Teradata are. So earlier, right, we had uh, systems like only DB2 and OAPI, which were both OLTP systems as well as OLAP systems. So transactional processing systems were at those systems as well as data warehousing uh, was also done on those systems. But Teradata was only for data warehousing purpose, only for large systems. It is an open system. Why? Because it can run on multiple platforms, Linux, Solaris, MPRAS, Unix, Windows operating system. So what does a Unix MPRAS uh, operating system mean is uh, in uh, like uh, 10 years, what happened was the Unix operating system, Teradata people had modified few flavors of the OS operating system as per the Teradata standards and then they named it as Unix MPRAS. So MPRAS is a flavor of Unix operating system. So earlier most of the clients were running Teradata on MPRAS operating system. But now uh, most of the customers have been migrated into Linux operating system. So 95% plus uh, commercial clients are running the Teradata on Linux operating systems. It is uh, compliant with ANSI industry standards. So all the syntax and semantics for any database which follows the ANSI standards right, same applies to Teradata as well. The syntax and semantics are in line with ANSI standards. Uh, Teradata, it runs on a single or multiple node. I'll explain you basically what is a single or a multiple node means. A node is basically a machine, but how it runs on a single or a multiple node will see in the coming slide. And uh, Teradata, it's basically a database server, and uh, it uses parallelism to run uh, or manage terabytes of data, and it is capable of supporting concurrently many users from various client platforms using the massive parallel processing architecture. The architecture of Teradata, we call it as massive parallel processing architecture. Basically, more than one node, if we have, then we call it as an MPP system, massive parallel processing. Yeah, hi, Vartan. Um, what is the difference between Oracle and the Teradata? Oracle is also can is capable of holding large data, so. Uh, large data, but in Teradata, right, the distribution is uh, automatic and it distributes the data evenly across the system and uh, the data is not shared between across their processes. Mm -hmm. That is one advantage. And then basically the distribution of the data across the system and each process owns a disk. So whatever the task we have, right, it gets divided into multiple tasks. Multiple tasks will be segregated across the multiple process and each process will be processing, processing that task. So multiple task by multiple process, all the process running in parallel. Mm -hmm. okay. And the tail data basically is a cost based optimizer. It's a cost based approach. Whereas Oracle, right, most of the uh, standards in uh, most of the optimizer rules are rule based. So they are predefined rules. Okay, this is this is rule one. This is rule two. This is rule three. So whichever rule satisfies, right? It processes in that way. 
but tell data it's a cost based approach suppose if you have two different tables and you want to perform a joint across different configurations of a system it will perform in a different manner but whereas in an oracle system right whatever configuration you take it performs in a similar way so tell data basically it's a cost based approach now what the other rdbms and uh, they are coming up is with like trying to eliminate some of the rules and try to come up with a cost based approach okay. i'll explain you in the one of the slide what exactly how exactly the cost based approach will be performed If you look at uh, to the history of Teradata, right? basically it started way back in 1975, and it released its first product in 1979. Like version one release, one V1 R1 was the first uh, product of Teradata, and uh, later on many new features have been added onto the product. And some of the major releases were in uh, 2002, 2003, like V2 R5, V2 R5.1 where some of the prominent features like a binary large object, partition, primary index, compression, user defined functions were introduced in 2000. In V2 R6, Connect Statistics was introduced so that it can perform better optimization or better request processing. Then query rewrite, this is one of the prominent feature in Tel data in TD2L, query rewrite feature. And then uh, other features like uh, Scalar, Subquery, and OPI got introduced in TD13. And in TD14, Temporal and Columnar feature has been introduced. So currently, even TD14 has been released to the market, and some of the many major commercial and the retail clients are currently working on TD14 environment. So currently, in the development side, we, we are running, uh, we are developing on the TD15. Data 15 version is being developed. So temporal feature and the columnar feature are the popular features in Teradata in the latest versions. Columnar is basically like uh, if you heard about database like Vertica, where the data is mostly from the column perspective. So each column is stored as a single table. So even that feature has been implemented in Teradata. So if you want to store the data row wise you can store row wise if you want to store the data column wise you can store the column wise so that features a little bit of capacity and uh, coming to the basically core architecture of the data right what uh, basically this is a single node the gray color box which you are seeing that can be treated as a node a single node a single node is nothing but a machine and if you install Teradata right onto a single node, then these are the components which get installed. The parsing engine and the access module processor and the virtual disk. Which we say B disk. B disk is nothing but it's a collection of physical disk. So collection of physical disk we say one with virtual disk. And each virtual disk is associated with a processor. And that processor is called access module processor. The functionality of an access module processor is similar to the functionality of a physical processor. What does the physical processor do? It performs operations on the disk. So similarly, access module processor performs operations on the disk. Message passing layer. Message passing layer is like a communication protocol between two processors, between the parsing engine and the app and across the apps. And the parsing engine is the one which does the syntax and semantics checking in the system of the request process. Whatever the request we submit to the system, parsing engine is the one which will check the syntax and semantics. Parsing engine also has the intelligence to optimize the request. So if you send any request, right, it has the intelligence to optimize the request, how efficiently you can execute the request. That kind of plan generation can be done by parsing engine. Apart from that, it also has intelligence to distribute the data. Suppose if I have uh, 1 million uh, records to be inserted into a single table, it has the intelligence to distribute the data across the system. 
So these are the major functionalities of a parsing index. Now, in this slide, what we will say is basically if uh, if you want to insert a sample data into a table, how does it happen? And on top of that, if you want to perform a request, how does it perform? So in this example, right, we have we are saying that okay, the client is having around twelve records need to be inserted into a single table. Now, one by one record or bulk records will be sent to the parsing engine so that they can be inserted into the table. Now, how it happens is basically, as I said, parsing engine has the intelligence to distribute the data. So, you can see that here, the record 2 has been distributed to AMP1. Record 32 has been distributed to AMP3. Uh, 67 has been distributed to AMP4. Like that, whole data has been distributed across the AMPs. Now, if we perform any request on top of this data set, so on top of this table, I want to perform some request. For example, take a simple request like, okay, I want to fetch all the records from the table. Now, that request will be sent to the parsing engine to the system and then parsing engine will pick that request. Now what does the parsing engine do? It will broadcast the request to all the amps. So each amp will be having that request now. Select star from the table. Select star from the table. Now each amp will be responsible for processing that request on the disk. Okay, so single request request has been broadcasted and all the apps are performing the same request in parallel. So, once each app does a processing on the disk, it will send the result to the message passing layer. Now, once all the apps have sent back the result set, the message passing layer will drop the results into a single set and it will send to the client from where the request has been sent. So, now since the single, so why the processing very efficient here because we are not loading the data of the complete table on the single uh, drive. We are basically distributing the data across multiple drives or multiple amps basically. Multiple disks we are distributing so that the processing of each and every amp has very very minimal data to process. What happens if all the records go into one particular drive? Then the processing time of that particular process will be high. So all this happens internally, right? Yes. So how the data will be, suppose if you have 10 tables, then and you, if you have 100 amps, right? Then each and every amp will be holding 10 tables in data, subset, each table subset, each amp will be holding. In the earlier slide, slide as I said, tail data runs on a single node or a multiple node, right? So basically this is a single node. Now what is a multiple node means? More than one node. So similar kind of a node, more than one. So again, it has passing engine, then access module process and virtual disk. So what happens if you have, have additional loads, then your, your node configuration is getting double dot, triple dot, quadruple. So that the performance of the system also will be double, triple dot, quadruple. So there is a linear scalability in the performance as the number of con nodes increases or as the number of parts in, uh, uh, number of apps increases, right? The performance of the system also increases. It is linearly scalable. A single node system we call as an SMP, symmetric multiprocessor, whereas a multi-node we call it as a MPP system, massive parallel processor. So for fetching any kind of data, any records, um, records will be distributed parallelly, right? Okay. Uh, now come again. How did it fetches the data? Can you explain once again? I didn't get it. 
like suppose if I want to fetch this table data, how many records I need to get? 12 records at the end. Okay. So the request will be sent to each and every AMP. Okay. Suppose assume this is table T1. So select star from T1 will be sent by passing engine to all the AMPs. So each AMP will be having that request. Okay. 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 And then AMP1 will be processing the three records and sent to MPL. AMP2 will be processing these records and sent to MPL. Once all the AMPs finishes their corresponding task and then sends to the MPL. MPL then it will accumulate all the result sets into one set and then send it to the client from where the request has been sent.